Bye. Perhaps the most important aspect of successfully transporting cattle is making sure you handle them slowly, quietly, and patiently prior to the loading process. Dr. Ron Gill is an expert on animal handling practices and he's instructed thousands of cattle producers from across the United States on low stress handling principles. As we get ready to ship cattle or move them off your operation or transport them anywhere, you really need to start planning as to what's going to be uh, located where in the trailer. You need to sort the calves off early on so they don't get injured or hurt in the process of, of loading. That way you can load them in separate compartments as well. Then you need to pay attention to the size of the cattle that you're going to put in each compartment. You don't want to mix large cattle and small cattle in the same compartment. When we focus on low stress livestock handling, we try to focus on getting cattle to work for us and not trying to force the cattle to go somewhere they really don't want to go. And so you have to establish movement in a set of cattle and then try to manage that movement so it reduces stress. When you're loading cattle out, once again, you want to make sure everything's set and ready to go and then bring the cattle up and start the loading process. Once again, right here, we've got to raise the floor on this particular chute to where it matches up with the back of that trailer. There's also another issue with this chute. The boards on the side of it need to be replaced. Once again, that's all for safety of the livestock. A lot of people think the sides of a chute have to be solid. That's not necessarily so, and in low stress livestock handling, Oftentimes, it's better to have open-sided chutes that are safe where they can't get a foot out the bottom, but they can see you when you're in the right position. The problem with open-sided facilities is that they can see you when you're in the wrong position. So from a low-stress standpoint, I actually like these open-sided corrals, loadouts, to where the cattle can see you when you're right. Once I have everything set at the loading surface, and I know it's safe for the cattle to come across that that gap between the trailer and the, and the flooring. I like to go inside the trailer. This is the next area where you can really have some problems and issues. You need to make sure you inspect these safety latches on the, the partition gates, not only for your safety, but also for the safety of the cattle. So you wanna make sure that they're fully functional, all the interior latches are right. Uh, once again, open these gates, open them all the way back. Latch them securely. You don't want them coming, drifting in front of the cattle as you're loading. You might have to reload, or cattle will hang themselves on the edge of these gates, causing injury, and it's very dangerous. You just need to make sure you do that. I like to do this process from the inside of the trailer. It makes me take one final look at my flooring, my latches, to make sure everything's right and ready before I load cattle. So once again, go all the way to the front of this trailer, checking your latches, and make sure that you open them where they are safe and secure. The other aspect of this we don't talk about very often are these self-catch latches. These are very important. You can push that gate and it will latch itself. If you're having to try to pin a gate at this point in time, it puts you in a very unsafe position. So if at all possible, go to these self-catch latches and then you can secure them normally from the outside to make sure they don't come undone. But if they come undone in transportation of the cattle, uh, that can cause some injury to the livestock as well. So once again, do your interior inspection, see if you see any loose wiring uh, on older trailers in particular, see if anything's been pulled loose and just make sure everything's secure. One thing you really wanna do and probably the last thing as you exit the trailer is check the flooring and make sure that it's secure uh, that it won't have any breakthroughs. And the other aspect of it you need to be cautious about is the traction on the flooring. You don't want slippage in a trailer. This particular trailer has very good grooves to it. The issue with a new trailer such as this one is these are so good that if cattle are fighting the confinement and closing, uh, enclosement of a trailer, they can actually rasp their feet off. So that's one reason it's extremely important to use low stress methods to get these cattle on here where they'll be very calm when they get in this, on this flooring. It's really good, the traction's great, but when scraping or they're pushing of their feet against that, you can actually cause abrasions which can lead to foot abscesses, which is another safety concern in our cattle. Once you're through inspecting the trailer, the next thing is to decide how you're gonna load that trailer. 
where you won't need your weight distribution, what type of cattle you won't wear in the trailer. And that depends a lot on the type of trailer you're using. Whether or not it's a bumper pull trailer or tongue pull trailer, uh, follow behind is another term that's used for them. Those trailers have to have the, the majority of the weight in the front. You want to balance it out to some extent, but if you get it too heavy on the rear of the trailer, it has a tendency to whip as you pull that trailer down the, the highway. So you want to make sure that you have an equal and correct load distribution in those trailers. On a gooseneck type trailer, it's not that big an issue where the weight's located in that trailer. Uh, you don't necessarily want it all up at the front, but it will not hurt the pulling and towing capacity of that vehicle. On the pull behind trailers, you also don't want to overload that trailer relative to the towing capacity of the vehicle that you're going to be pulling it with. That leads to very unsafe traveling conditions. So once again, make sure you have your load densities right, the right number of cattle for each partition within the trailer, and make sure that when you have all that in your mind, everything's sorted right, then you can go load the cattle. As we get ready to load trailers, a lot of people like to put their cattle right behind the trailer or in a crowd tub before they're ready to load those cattle. When you do that, you lose movement. Part of this low stress livestock handling and getting cattle to, to load on their own is to have that movement once again and manage it. You need to work from the front of the cattle as much as possible. This is a fairly long uh, way to the trailer so I've got to send those cattle where they want to go on that trailer by themselves. If you had somebody working from the outside, they could be working in this area in front of me and continue to put a little pressure on those cattle. As we get these cows up close to the back of the trailer, I want to always go to the gate and open it before I start to load them. Ideally, I'd like to send these cattle past this gate and then bring them back to it. But this particular setup will work as well. Get the cattle lined out have them come around me, put pressure on them. All I have to do is work from the front of these cattle to send them on that trailer. Back off of them, let them load themselves. You've sent them, there's nothing to stop the cattle at this point in time. You can stay a safe distance. Either you can follow them up and close them in the trailer. Once again, they're on that trailer, they're quiet and they're calm. It's interesting a lot of times when cattle load that easy, People seem to think all of this was an accident, but that's part of the key to understanding low stress livestock handling is where your body position needs to be to make it look that easy. And once again, if you're in the right position and you send those cattle right, and that's a key word, it looks like you're not doing anything.